Hello, everybody. My name is Terrence Parker, and I work for Jinlong Technologies, and this is the webinar for the Solus Inverter Rapid Shutdown Device. Um, I work for Jinlong Technologies, which manufactures the Jinlong Solus Inverters and the Rapid Shutdown Device that we'll be talking about today. We're a market leader in PV string inverters. We've we're founded in 2005, and I'm currently number five here in the United States in uh, market share. Uh, we were recently rated as a top brand in uh, the United Kingdom and uh, have a good record for reliability. The Jinlong Solus PV inverter lineup includes both single phase uh, inverters and three phase. These uh, uh, UL versions of the 2.5 to 5 uh, K inverters include up to two uh, maximum power point trackers each and uh, we have new models out uh, six through ten that have as high as four MPPTs each. Um, well, but we're here to talk about rapid shutdown and uh, why you might ask. Well, here we are. You can see that uh, although PV modules don't appear to be a very flammable device, actually they burn quite well. Uh, the EVA, that is kind of the cushioning material in between the back sheet, the Tedlar back sheet, and the glass front, is uh, very flammable. And uh, you can see on that top left or top right uh, photograph that those, although we're on a metal building with very little uh, burnable materials up there, there is a big fire because of that uh, EVA burning like uh, burning like heck down there. So. These kinds of situations could be prompted by a parallel uh, arc fault, a ground fault, or they could be a, a, a series uh, fault on, or an arc fault. And we'll be talking about that mostly during this uh, webinar. 690.12 in the National Electric Code uh, 2014 version, you can find uh, this description of what the National Electric Code is asking us to put on buildings now. And indeed, this rapid shutdown device is for situations where uh, we're mounting a PV system on a building. If it's out in the back 40 or uh, out in a field somewhere behind the fence, uh, rapid shutdown isn't required. But if you are indeed on a building, residential, for example, or small commercial, that kind of thing, you need to control those conductors uh, from the PV system if they're going to be any more than five feet uh, in that building. And although this is an abbreviated version of it, basically what we're saying is we're going to have to bring all those control conductors to less than 30 volts and less than 240 volt amps uh, uh, in less than 10 seconds. So incidentally, the uh, Jinlong Solus rapid shutdown device uh, shuts down the system within about three seconds. So uh, you also need to make sure that you label these systems properly, but if, if done so, uh, they're relatively simple to install. The PV industry, after this call from the San Jose Fire Department to improve the National Electric Code and improve uh, safety up on the roof, uh, has responded. And we've come up with a number of different kinds of rapid shutdown devices, including uh, two or three piece units, like you see from Midnight Solar up there, where, where they actually have an annunciator uh, and lighting to help the firemen understand what's going on with the system. Other systems like these others that you see below uh, can be mounted similar uh, to a microinverter, or they require that the box be mounted vertically up on the roof. Um, so there's a wide variety of devices that you can add to your systems to provide this rapid shutdown requirement. Now, the Jinlong Solus rapid shutdown device uh, comes in two different versions, uh, a two input, a two output unit, and a one input and one output unit. Um, you can see a picture of it actually there in the box. Uh, it also includes two terminals to help you connect it into our inverter, but generally the device is a, a relatively small uh, package that can be mounted underneath the modules to kind of keep a nice clean aesthetic look. It has a two amp non-serviceable internal fuse to protect the workers. You don't need to worry about that. There is a PV string side marked STR1 and there's a inverter side, INV side. And so you must make sure that you install this in the right direction. You want the PV source circuits coming in on the string side, and you want the PV output circuits leaving the device and going down to your inverter MPPT connections uh, on the inverter side. 
So what is it? How does it work? Well, it follows the requirements of 690.12, and it is listed per the UL 1741 standard. It can actually be used in any PV system, really. I mean, uh, it's just a, uh, a very basic device with relays in it. There's an indicator light on the device that shows there's AC power connected. Uh, it's really just uh, positive and negative DC conductors pass through these closed relays inside the rapid shutdown device. These are normally open relays, and, and they're held closed by the AC control circuit power source that you'll also be connecting to the system. You can see there's a cord here. Uh, this particular one happens to have a bulkhead connector on it and MC4 connectors on both ends, but you'll see later on that we have uh, removed this connector, gave you as much optionality as possible in connecting the AC source, and we've also eliminated the... Uh, on the inverter side, we've eliminated the connector, so you have a, uh, you can connect the, we've also lengthened these wires so you connect them in a wide variety of ways. So generally how this device works is when the AC power is cut, whether that's cut to the inverter or to the uh, AC shutdown device or to the uh, point of connection breaker, either way, any of these things, or even if the fireman comes and shuts down power to the entire building, that'll shut down power to the relays inside this device, they'll open up and the PV system will be shut down. Now, here's just a basic uh, outline of a single line diagram of how this thing is going to be installed. You can see that on the very left-hand side over here, you could connect as many as two strings per uh, channel here. Each one of these channels is rated for 20 amps. The total device here is rated for 30 amps, and so you can connect two strings onto one side of the rapid shutdown device, but on the other side, you would only connect one to ensure that you retain, you remain underneath the total ampacity of the device. On the other side, you can put a weathertight junction box, run your AC wire to a connector in there, run your two DC uh, positives uh, and negatives to your junction box, and then run these PV source circuits over to your uh, DC connections on the Solus inverter. It's interesting here that you can, can are allowed to run this AC control circuit wiring inside the same conduit as the DC conductors. This is not normally done in a PV system where it is specifically called out in the National Electric Code where the inverter output is not supposed to be in the same conduit as the DC input. So, however, this is a control circuit and under Article 330, you can find uh, support for keeping these two sets of conductors in the same conduit. Now, it's interesting to note here that if you are going to, you can put different size strings on each one of these uh, terminals and on, on the maximum PowerPoint tracking devices over here, you can have different lengths of strings. You can have a, a length of five modules uh, and then on the other one, a length of 10 modules if you want it. However, if you are going to parallel modules onto one channel, you want to make sure that both of these strings are the same length. Both are five, both are eight, both are 10, whatever. So just make sure that that's, uh, that's done. Here's the one input device. This is also rated for 20 amps total, so you can do two inputs on this uh, up to 20 amps going into uh, a single MPPT on this end. Now, we have, this is just a general chart I put together, nothing too complicated here, but if you are using the 2.5 to 3.6, where you have two MPPTs and each one's rated at 10 amps, then a one two-channel device is going to be just fine. I mean, you could use two single-channel RSDs if you wanted. For example, if the two strings came off opposite ends of the roof, you might find it convenient to use two uh, single-channel RSDs. However, with just a uh, two inputs, each rated less than 10 amps, a single two-channel device would work just fine. Now, the 4K and 5K inverters, they also have two MPPTs, but one of them is rated as 18 amps. Uh, so actually using the two-channel device is... Uh, uh, fully is perfectly compliant with this type of system, and uh, you'll find that you'll just need, again, just one two-channel device, or again, you can use two, two channels. Now, the 6 to 7.6 inverters, they have three MPPTs each, so you, you're going to end up with either two of the two channels where one is not used, or three of the single channels, and then the 8 to 10K, these devices have 
four MPPTs, so two two-channel devices or four of the single-channel RCDs would do the job. Now, let's talk a little bit about how the system is connected. I want you to you know this, that you notice that there's MC4 connectors on the string side of the device, and so you're going to use your a proper MC4 uh, crimper to connect these barrels onto the ends of your wires so that you can make nice arc-free, series arc-free connections. This is where a lot of the issues come up. Now, whenever you see an arc fault uh, air, uh, alarm on a Jinlong inverter, you can be assured that it's on the DC side. And it's either going to be at the connections here at the rapid shutdown, or it's going to be in your connections at that weather tight junction box, or it's going to be within your PV source circuit conductors, or it's actually going to be within the modules themselves. So when you're looking for an arc fault, you have to be uh, you have to remember that in, it's possible that the arc may be happening in the module junction box or with one of the connectors themselves. So it's very important that you use the proper MC4 can, uh, crimper to ensure that the barrels are properly crimped into the connectors. Now, in addition to the DC conductors that you will be connecting to one side of the rapid shutdown device and then the output side of the conduct device. You'll also be controlling an AC control circuit conductors to um, power up these normally open in relays and you need to close them so that the power will flow. And remember, whenever you energize that device and you see that green light on, then you can be assured that there may be power on both the input and output side. Now, you'll notice here this article 300.3C1 uh, is the one that will you can reference to uh, when inspectors ask you about running the AC wires in the same conduit as the DC wires. Now, over here you can see that what Jinlong has done is we have what's called a three terminal, one, two, three, cage terminal. That's what these rapid shutdown devices are actually called. They're called cage terminals, where you stick your screwdriver in here or there or there to open up the cage. You put your wire in after stripping it back about three quarters inch, and then you release your screwdriver, and that'll drop the cage down on the wire. Very nice, vibration-free, uh, gas-type kind of connections. Jinlong really likes this type. You can see up to the top here that Jinlong actually attaches a ferrule to each one of their wires to ensure that it's properly seated inside of there. So this is basically where you can connect your AC connectors, your uh, uh, AC power source for your rapid shutdown device. Now, these two terminals here, L1 and L2, are gonna be used for your output wires uh, going to your point of connection. Now, you don't have to connect it here. You can actually just run the wires from the DC side through the AC side and then run them down to uh, uh, their own point of connection or at the point of connection where you landed your uh, AC breaker. So uh, you have some optionality here. You can uh, land them here or at some other AC power source. It's important also to ground this device. It's important to ground any Jinlong inverter too, because remember, Jinlong inverters generally do not require a neutral, and so uh, the ground, uh, along with L1 and L2 connections, are important for overall functionality. Now, grounding this device, you have some options. You could, number one, you could use a weave washer right on the uh, connection plate that's attaching to your rail, and it would now be bonded along with your rail system. You could use uh, the grounding lug that's right on the device. You can just run your bare number six through that as you would any other metallic device up on the roof. Or you can run a ground uh, from your AC uh, control circuit conductors, which include three conductors, an L1, an L2, and a ground. So here's three options for, connect for grounding the device. You can also see that this is a proper drawing where we're showing the extended leads on the DC, on the PV source circuit side where we've staggered the connectors to make the bonding or let's say binding to the rail a little bit easier. And we've removed the connectors on this side and extended the length over two feet to allow for uh, a variety of ways to bring those wires into your weather tank junction box. Of course, remember, you always want to pro uh, use proper drip loop te uh, technique when, whenever you're wiring uh, into uh, a J box of any sort. Now, 
when that green light is on, uh, you make you have to make sure that you understand that both sides may be energized. So if you're commissioning this device, you'll want to energize the inverter AC output terminals. That will energize the control circuit conductors. And in most cases, otherwise throw the breaker, or if you've run it to its, these control circuit conductors directly to their own breaker, energize that. Now check your green light on the RSD, confirm it's getting the 240 VAC. Now use your multimeter to confirm DC polarity on the string side of the RSD and the inverter side of the, of the RSD. Move your DC switch on the inverter to the on position and uh, confirm that you're on the inverter itself, that the DC power LED is lit. And then you should see that the inverter starts to initialize. That means the power is flowing from your uh, PV modules through the RSD and to the DC terminals on the inverter. Everything's good. So what if everything's bad? What if you get an error code or something on your inverter or the power isn't flowing, uh, no DC, no power light? Well, there's a couple of different alarm codes that you might see. And uh, there are a number of tools that I would prefer that you bring to the site to help troubleshoot the any sort of arc fault issues that you see on site. Now, one you might see is an alarm code, it's called Ground Pro, ground, which means that uh, you've got an issue on uh, your grounding of your DC side. So something showed up, less than 600 kiloohms, and so uh, what you need to do is look at your PV side, your DC side, check your DC wire for skinned insulation inside the conduit, a classic parallel uh, ground fault situation. You can usually find these with your multimeter. So now if you see an OV-DC, this is an error message that uh, the DC input voltage exceeds the inverter operation uh, threshold. So check your uh, string voltage to make sure that it's under 600 volts. You might see an OV bus actually uh, as well uh, as an indication that the internal bus on the inverter has seen voltage higher than it, uh, the higher than its threshold. So look for these two alarms and then check your string voltage to make sure it's at open circuit under a cold day scenario is less than 600. And then the one you might most frequently might see would be arc fault. And this arm indicates that there's something wrong with the DC side. It's not about what's going on in the inverter. If you see an arc fault check error, that's something wrong with the arc fault board inside the inverter. But if you just see arc fault uh, reset uh, holding the escape button for three seconds, then this means that there's some issue on the DC side wiring. So you got to check that. You can uh, use your multimeter uh, to check and find far, uh, arcs within the DC side, but I'll tell you, using a megometer is a really nice way to go here because in essence, what you're doing is kind of pressurizing those lines with a little extra voltage to help you find that arc fault. So it can be a very useful device. Now, I want you to be careful. We'll talk a little bit about uh, using uh, a megometer at the end of the seminar, but uh, uh, it's a very, very useful device for checking uh, for arc faults. And uh, I highly recommend that uh, we use these. Now, Another way to go, uh, I like to use these digital laser uh, thermometers because any arc fault happening in series with your wiring is going to heat up that connection typically. And, and, and it's not uncommon that you can find a problem with a module that's uh, not functioning properly, module connectors, your own connectors, you know, shooting it onto the connections inside your WeatherTech junction box. This little device, and they can be as cheap as 20 bucks. I think I'm showing the one that you mount onto a DeWalt battery for about 100 bucks. Man, what a useful tool uh, for uh, finding uh, hot connect connections in your system. And then finally, your smartphone, we'll use that. That's a tool that I like all uh, installers to bring with them on site so that they can do the connections for your Wi Fi and uh, communications. So, um, that's generally the seminar that I wanted to point out to you today. And you can see here in this last uh, uh, picture, our factory in Ningbo. It's uh, just off the coast of China, south of Shanghai. And this is where we manufacture all of our own inverters, all of the boards and everything that go in there. And we manufacture the rapid shutdown device. Thank you, everybody, for attending the seminar. Uh, appreciate it. And uh, have a good day.